What's going on to all my Euphoria fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again and I'm so excited because Euphoria is back. We're talking season two, episode one, which was titled Trying to Get to Heaven Before They Close the Doors. What a fire episode. We get some new relationships. We got a new character, Rue and Jules, getting back together. Is that a good thing and a bad thing? And oh yeah, we got a grandma that's a straight G. We're breaking it all down here in this for the review. But before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, we are on the quest to 20,000 subscribers. So if you want to be a part of the community, make sure you subscribe and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this review, we'll make sure to like the review and share the review. But more importantly, once you've seen this premiere episode of season two, to. Let's talk about it in the comments. What new relationship are you most excited for? What do you think about Rue and Jules getting back together? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? We got a new character in Elliot. We got this new drug dealer, Lori, Fez, Lexi, Maddie, Nate, and Cass. I mean, so much to go over. I want to know your thoughts, but also thoughts, theories, and predictions of what you hope to see in this new season. Let's go ahead and talk about that in the comments. But quick plug before we break down this premiere episode, I will be going live like literally immediately after this video ends. 9 15 central time myself and some amazing guests we're going to be breaking down this episode more in depth talking about the characters talking about our thoughts pros cons favorite moments and more importantly talking to you all in the, of the community about this premiere episode and what we hope to see in this season two so again literally probably right after this video ends we will be going live on this channel talking more euphoria so i hope you all can join but putting that aside let's break down this episode again full spoilers just my initial thoughts this is one of my favorite episodes of the show so far. This was such a fantastic premiere episode. It felt like, and this is my favorite episode of Euphoria in regards to what it felt like. It felt like Shook Ones, which is episode four of season one with the carnival and Maddie, you know, dressed like a hooker. <laughs> That's my favorite episode of the show. And this one's like literally right behind that because it has that kind of energy. We're following different characters. We have most of our characters in one location. So I love this episode. I love the prospects of all these new characters, new relationships, over relationships this was just a great episode of one of my favorite shows on tv and we're gonna break it down why but again let me know your thoughts in the comments below but let's get into it here and i love this opening i think this might be not only one of my favorite origins from like meeting our characters because all of our main characters have gotten like a backstory so far like a solo episode that kind of gives you a backstory of where they come from their parents their drama their complications and i think this might be my favorite one because this is one of my favorite characters and fez Meeting his grandma, who, like I said up top, is a G. I don't know if she has a name, but I'm calling her Grandma G because she was a gangster in this episode. As we see her with her pistol going to the strip club and shoots Fez's dad in the legs. And again, yet another character like Fez and all the other characters who have complicated relationship with their parents. I would imagine, I don't know if we're going to meet Fez's mom in this episode or in the season, I should say. I'm pretty sure she's somewhere out there doing drugs, maybe still stripping. Maybe we'll meet her. We'll see in this season. But I would imagine she she probably was a stripper and slept with the owner and that's kind of how the you know fez came to be but putting that aside man just seeing his grandmother doing the work you know after he punched his son shoots him in the leg sends him a message and say i'm gonna go ahead and take care of this boy now what a g what a great character it's sad that she's unfortunately she's in the bed we won't get more of her unless she has like a miracle and she wakes up out of nowhere which i doubt but i love this order story i love that character again i'm calling her grandma g i don't know if again i don't know if they named her anything but boy what a complicated relationship like all of our other characters but again fez to me let correct me if I'm wrong i think he's a fan favorite he's one of my favorite characters and i love that we get that backstory of him his grandmother but also the little man his little helper from season one as Stray, who he looks at as a little brother. I love that three. Like, give me a spinoff with them <laughs> before she had her accident. I just want to see more of that relationship, who they interacted with, where they got their drugs from. I mean, that's just a spinoff show within itself. If they want to do that, HBO, you heard it here first. Give me that uh, that prequel uh, <laughs> spinoff series. But moving on again, seeing this relationship between those three, and we see that she has some health issues, which is probably understandable. Her line of work seems to be very stressful. On top of taking care of two little boys so we see that she has her accident she passes out and the only thing that i was like a little like confused with fez says that they didn't you know obviously as rue is narrating that he didn't call 911 because obviously they're going to go to the house and there's drugs everywhere and they would have been like child endangerment take the kids away all that stuff so i get why he didn't call 911 but he drives her to the hospital but then they take her back home I would imagine, first and foremost, and I know, you know, they're in L.A., they probably, you know, people slip through the cracks all the time, but wouldn't they have brought her home and noticed, like, okay, who's the super, who's supervising these kids and probably take them away, but hey, 
They didn't take him away. She's at the house. She has her bed. She has her medicine. And we now see this is how Fez, he got into the family business. We see his relationship with drugs. We see him taking care of his brother and his grandmother. And again, I think, let me know in the comments, is this your favorite origin story? I think it's between this one, Rue, I mean, all of their all their backstories are incredible, but I think this might be my favorite one. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. But like I said, this is Fez. His origin story is how he took over the family business. Cut back to when we got the the season finale interaction between Mouse and Fez, and obviously his his second hand man, and obviously Ashtray. And Ashtray, this little dude here is a beast. He goes straight up. He. <laughs> He gets that hammer and and it just goes to work. He hits Mouse in the head, and I, I'm presuming Mouse is dead and they buried the body. That could be a plot to look forward to because I would imagine there's going to be people looking for Mouse. If you guys saw Kevin Hart's show, uh, you know, True Story. They're in all the drug story. There's always someone that someone like Mouse talks to. So I'm pretty sure Mouse will be looked for, and that might play into some of this stuff in this season if he's not dead, which I'm pretty sure he's dead. He hit him in a temple to head. Mouse is dead, but he also hits Mouse's second hand man in the face, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But that relationship, those brothers, they look out for each other. But uh, that was a, a pretty uh, out of left field wild card move by Ashtray and, and messing up that kid's face. But what a great opening. What a great origin. I was just like, I'm locked in. I'm so excited the show is back. And that was just the tip of the iceberg because the rest of this episode is just fantastic, which we cut to present day. I don't know if you all have watched the Rue special and the and the Jewel special, which if you haven't, I recommend it. I, I wouldn't say it's a necessity to watch, but I think it adds so much more context to season one. You know, Rue's episode, her mindset, why she relapsed in the finale. But I think Jules gave us a lot more context to season one, her mindset, her point of view of the relationship between her and Rue and her relationship with her mom and why she sees Rue and her mom having a very similar relationship. So I, if you guys haven't, I recommend you go check out those specials. But I love that we kind of catch back up to these characters we're in present day and rue obviously she relapsed and she makes some really bad decisions in this episode we see number one she's in the car singing tupac you know hit him up which is just a great way to uh, open up the episode but we see fez has to take care of some business because we know his house was raided last year they uh you know no thanks to nate which we're going to talk about that fight uh, when we get to that point, which that was an ass whooping that was way overdue. But we see that they are going to do some business and, and work with this Lori uh, young lady. And this is where things just get really complicated. We see Mouse's homeboy has a girlfriend by the name of Frey, who is just a complete drug addict, which we'll talk about here. And then just seeing Rue, seeing another junkie that takes her drugs to another level. And once she saw heroin, I'm like, oh man, Rue's going to end up some way, somehow taking heroin. I thought maybe later in this season, but in this very episode it happens but her <laughs> it was so funny just seeing her uh, rue and that lady uh frey having a conversation about drugs and, and again rue can see this is your future rue this this girl that you're in a car with frey this is what your life can be like if you continue to go down that road i think this is more foreshadowing of what we can expect from rue this season experimenting with different drugs and going down that darker path so something to look forward to i shouldn't say look forward to but something a plot that i think will be explored this season but let's meet our new drug dealer who's replacing the doctor that mouse beat up which i don't know if the doctor died i'm pretty sure he didn't die he just probably got beat up really bad with, you know, obviously Fez hitting him with a gun. But Lori is uh, Heisenberg. <laughs> She's Walter White. We get a little origin. We hear briefly that she used to be a teacher, which I wonder if she taught at their school and if she knows any of the students. She didn't seem to know Rue, but I wonder if she was a teacher at her high school. But she used to be a teacher, but that didn't work out for her. So she now is the Heisenberg of the show. But that whole setup of him, you know, she, her telling her boys to strip off their clothes, which by the way, when the dude was dancing, reminded me so much of Maya from uh, Polk Fiction, which this show has so many like homages to great classic films like Polk Fiction. But that whole setup of like, are they wearing a wire? The comedian beats going to the bathroom with rue in the shower and, and just the whole conversation this show it, it has it does such a great job of like dark comedy like this is it was funny but this is some serious situation that rue was in and fez was in ashtray was in so i just love how the show is able to balance those tonal shifts within one scene it was just such great writing to me but time to talk business with Lori as fez tells her I don't like the way Mouse did business, which she's like, well, I don't like the way you do business. You got a kid in here, a high school kid in here, but nonetheless, they do business. And I 
Don't think this will be the last time we see Lori. I think, especially what happens to Nate at the end of this episode, I think Lori would be a big character in this season. I think Nate might have a conversation with Lori and might raid someone else, which in return will have something to do with Fez maybe not being on the good graces of Lori. So I think we're going to get more Lori in this season. Let me know what you all think about that. But moving on, it's time to get down to the drama. We're going to a New Year's Eve party, which again, the chaotic nature of what was going on, who's at the party, who's going to be caught, which just had me on the edge of my seat. And I loved every single second of it. But Let's talk about these new relationships out there. First and foremost, we got Cassie and Nate having like their first interaction. And, and this is what I love about this new season. Seeing these characters interacting with different characters is going to be so great. Seeing the different dynamics. And this is one of them. Nate and Cassie, two broken people. And they have a bit of a conversation here talking about their relationships and their love stories. You know, obviously Cass and McKay aren't on good terms. We know Maddie and Nate are toxic as hell. I would imagine they're going to get together together sometime later in the season but this leads into her getting into the car with Nate they're drinking they're driving they're giving each other the eyes and he's impressed with her driving 100 miles per hour she's you know she spilled her beer on herself taking off her underwear die, you know jump out of the car I, I knew that they I'm like thinking to myself they're gonna get into an accident I knew they weren't gonna die because if you all saw the trailer they're clearly gonna be in the season but I'm like maybe they get into an accident and they just barely survive but no, we cut from them having that little sexual tension to them going to the bathroom. And um, yeah, they hooked up. They are, it's going to be so interesting to see this new dynamic and this new love story. And, and we know Cassie, she's so vulnerable. She's always seeking love. And I don't think this is the way to, well, not, I don't think this is not the way to go. Nate is the worst of the worst in regards to his personality, his, his, his characteristics. So toxicity here we come but speaking of just like great moments we see maddie who's one of my favorite characters obviously knocking on the door thinking he's taking a dump in there but we know what he was in there doing i'm like oh boy and Cass is crying i'm like this is just drama to the 10th degree meanwhile let's catch up with rue as she continues to go down this path she's hiding from jewels and we all know when it comes to her anxiety in regards to rue when she is nervous when she's upset when she just doesn't know what to do she reverts back to drugs so obviously that leads her to her car she finds her stash a uh, fray stash which obviously was heroin and unfortunately rue you did it again baby girl she took the drugs and this is just another gateway to opening up her eyes opening up her vision her third eye to another drug which is heroin which is just like the low of the low so foreshadowing for something a little bit later in this season we'll see but as we you know she's high and we'll talk about her meeting a new character Elliot we see officially another new couple with Fez and Lexi having some conversations which their conversation was one of my favorite which we'll talk about here in a second but cinematography of this show is just so great the way they place the camera and the lighting and this is one of my favorite shots of the episode we see Nate who at this point is like nervous that Maddie's gonna find Cass who's in the bathtub at this point in the episode but he sees Fez Fez sees him he sees uh Jules Jules sees him I just love the history of these characters and this season is gonna be so damn good but let's go back to Rue as she meets a new character by uh the name of Elliot which is a pretty great name <laughs> I'm really excited to meet more about this character and learn about him. I don't know if you all follow uh, this show a lot like I do. Uh, Calvin Harrison Jr., one of my favorite actors working in Hollywood, he was supposed to be in Euphoria, but due to scheduling, and also I think he wants to kind of get out of that teen, him being like a teenager, because he is, a, you know, an older, you know, like 25, 28, one of the best actors working in Hollywood, but he just, I don't think he wants to go back into doing high school roles, but neither here nor there, I wonder if he was going to play that Elliot character, but nonetheless, Elliot and Rue are the best of friends now, because they're exchanging drugs, you show me your drugs, I show you mine, and we see that this is the beginning of yet another bad decision by Rue, she just gravitates towards people that just, you know, you know, don't lead her down the right path. We'll see. I can't wait to learn more about this Elliot character. But meanwhile, going back to Cass, who's still in the tub at this point, as Maddie is, which was so gross, she wiped herself after she peed and threw the towel into Cass's face. And, you know, the boy Travis comes into the bathroom. They're flirting. I'm just like, she's going to get caught, and this is going to be a moment. But she's she finessed the situation, to say the least, right? But back to maybe one of my favorite conversations episode with Fez and Lexi. They're talking about religion. They're talking talking about McDonald's versus him selling drugs and more importantly we see them vibing we see that this is a relationship which 
Lexi, she seems she's like the only character that's level headed and doesn't get her doesn't get caught up in stuff. But now being involved with a drug dealer, she's gonna go down that path. I, I'm really excited to see that dynamic between those two characters. But again, I mentioned that this is one of the only episodes besides Shook Ones where we get most of our main characters in one location. As McKay finally makes it to the party, he catches up with Nate and they're having a conversation. Lexi is still, you know, calling, which by the way. Lexi was calling Cass this whole episode and it was going straight to voicemail. I assume that her phone either died or, her, or she turned it off, but then her phone went off in the bathtub. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense, but neither here nor there. I'm like, oh, she's going to get caught, but no, she doesn't get caught. She's in the bathroom and a guy's taking a dump, which was just so funny because that's what Maddie thought that Nate was doing, but she doesn't get caught not yet it's gonna happen later this season but let's move on let's wrap up the episode as we see again uh ethan's at the party at this point and, and him and cat we don't get much from them but i would imagine we're going to explore their character a little bit later they seem to be in a good spot but we know this show uh good things like that don't last let's talk about the new year eve party ending with our couples having a conversation we get mckay and Cass talking about their situation she tells him i'm just not a good person i don't think we should be in a relationship he kind of understands what she's saying like obviously she cheated he didn't ask who what when when even though it was that night and also she had her interaction with daniel in season one but we'll see what and obviously she had the abortion so there's a lot of drama going on with those two and i wonder if they'll somehow some way have the truthful honest conversation what's all going on and what took place but he understood what she meant but meant by that moment when he finds out that nate hooked up with her that night that's going to be something to look forward to but while all this is happening, we see Nate getting extremely, and this is just, again, building up to, I just can't wait for someone to whoop his ass. He's messing with McKay, talking about, did you hook up with her? Did you, you saw the episode, you, you know what he said at that moment. I'm just like, dude, someone needs to beat his ass, and uh, that ass whooping right around the corner. As meanwhile, Jules and Rue, they finally have their interaction. Jules knows that Rue's, she relapsed, she can tell, because obviously, like I said, if you watch Jules' special, her mom was an addict, so she kind of understands those personality traits, those characteristics of someone that's on drugs. She tells her that she relapsed, and we know from the finale, once she left her at the train station, again, whenever Rue is scared, nervous, has anxiety, complicated issues, she goes back to drugs. So, we end this episode in a very expressive way, a really great way, which again, this new relationship with uh, Fez and Lexi will be very exciting as he tells her this is one of the best things that's happened to me all year next to what he's about to do in a couple seconds. But meanwhile, we see this moment that I have been waiting for since meeting Nate. I appreciate the show giving us context of his dad, a terrible dad, and you have a little bit of sympathy for Nate, but he deserved his ass whooping, and it was such a good one, but in between that moment here, we get the infamous, beautiful cinematography as the show is highlighting all of our main characters setting the stage of different relationships, what's to come, but then we get the spotlight. It is happy New Year's to everyone. Rue and Jules has their conversation. Rue apologizes to her. She says she misses her, and then they get they kiss, which I think is alluding to them getting back together, which I don't think is a good thing. They're two great characters. They're two great people, but I just don't think right now this is the best time for them to be in a relationship, but that's something that we're going to explore this season. But uh, we end the episode with Fez talking to Nate. Hey, you going to make any New Year's resolution? Oh, I don't do that. What about you? Oh, it's a new year, playboy. You know, last time you saw me, you said he's going to kill me. Like, ah, oh, no, you know, water under the bridge. And that bridge comes to whoop Nate's ass. He hits him over the head with a bottle and just goes to work on Nate. And listen, I don't condone violence, ladies and gentlemen, but he deserved that, that ass whooping from blackmailing that kid, Tyler, last season, doing everything that he did with Jules and just all the despicable stuff that we see Nate does. That ass whooping was way overdue. And I'm so glad it was Fez. And I love the rule. She says, damn, that reminded me so much of Friday with Smokey and uh, obviously Ice Cube's character. What a great episode. I am so excited to be back again. Live stream is going on right now, so we're going to talk more about this episode, so go ahead and head over to that right now. But just wrapping up, I love the new character, Elliot. I'm excited to learn more about him. Lori, this drug dealer, Heisenberg, I think we're going to get more from her, especially when Nate is going to get his revenge. I think he's going to end up messing up her, corp or her empire and having, obviously, Fez being involved in that. Lexi and Fez, you know, we get Nate and Cassie and Maddie. So much to look forward to. I love this show. I'm so excited to be back, and I will be recapping this show every single week, and I hope you all can join me on this journey. That's my review. Let me know your pros, your cons, your thoughts, your theories, and what you hope to see in the weeks ahead. Like I said, right now, I'm live. 
pre-recording this in the past we're in the future present day check out more of the conversations on this channel on the channel right now we're talking about this episode on a live discussion so there you have it make sure if you stuck around to this point of review i appreciate you that you haven't already make sure to like share comment subscribe to the channel we're almost at 20,000 subscribers and i can't wait to hit that milestone with you all continue to grow this community thank you for watching this review hope you're staying safe we'll see you on a live stream make sure to subscribe check out the other content catch you on the next video